So this year is a uh, Nishmas. Let's see if I can read it. Gala Rachel Bas Achaver Shaul Chaim. Close enough. Okay. So she, she won't find <laughs> So uh, last week uh, we started discussing some Inyani Show for Inyani Rosh Hashanah. So we'll quickly review and continue. So we discussed the beginning of the fourth parak in Rosh Hashanah, where the Mishnah tells us when Yantif, when Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, not this year, but Mikdash Hayu Token of Aloba Medina. In the base of Mikdash, they blew shofar, but not in the Medina. Machok is Rashi and Rambam, what's the, what Mikdash is? Does it mean literally, or is the Rambam an inclusive in the old city of Yerushalayim? And then we discussed it's a Machokis. The Ram, the, it's the Machok is Yushalmi Bavli in terms of the conclusion. Everyone agrees to the bottom line is that the Mikdash Hayu Token of Aloma Medina, the question is, um, the question is why not? So the Yushalmi writes because it's two different sukkim. That's what the Torah describes the mitzvah of Shofar in two ways Yom Chua and Zichron Chua. So the Yushalmi writes, one Yom Chu is when Rosh Hashanah Chol during the week, with the, those days it could come out on. And when Rosh, when Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, that's Zichron Chua. And that's how the Bavli learns. And that's how the Yushami learns. And the Bavli says, no, Minat Torah, you could blow shofar even on Shabbos. And it's only Zayra the Rabbah, Rabbinic decree not to blow shofar. So everyone agrees to the bottom line, no shofar on Shabbos. According to the Bavli, there's no mitzvah. Zichron true, it's like blowing shofar today. It's a meaningless activity. According to the Bavli, I should blow shofar in our Torah. But the rabbis were concerned of Chilo Shabbos, so they said no shofar today. And we and said... why does the Yerushalmi, how does he explain the is he, of Zichron? No, that's, a, no, that's, how, that's how, how does the Bavli, you mean, we'll get to no, the... No, the Yerushalmi has two different psukim. Yom Shua is during the week, and Zichron... Oh, so I'm talking about yeah. really the Bavli. How get, does he explain the why does the Torah call it Zichron? I'm going to get, that'll be, that'll be tonight's year. I'll get to that oh. in a couple moments. But, so, according to the Yerushalmi, so why then, if there's Zichron Shua, why will it show from the base of Mikdash? If there's no Mitzvah, so that's a special Limug. They learn out from the, from the juxtaposition of the Psukim, Yom Chua is next to the Karbanas. And according to the Bavli, why don't we say Xera the Rabba in the Mikdash? Because we never do Ainshwas for Mikdash, Kohanim's reason hey, we're not concerned. So they, they agree to the facts, Mikdash token of Aloma Dina. So Mainaf Kamina between the Yushami and Bavli. So we mentioned a couple last week, num or potential Naf Kaminas. One is potentially if you if you mix up in the Davening, so we see so we don't reject the Yushalmi totally because in our Davidim we do accept the distinction. During the week we say Yom Chua in the Magzer and Zichron Chua on Shabbos. What happens if one makes a mistake and instead of saying Yom Chua, they say Zichron Chua, or the reverse, they say Zichron Chua instead of Yom Chua? So again, so according to the Bavli, there's nothing to talk about. It's definitely good because each both days are quite, apply equally Ben Bechol, Ben Bechabbos. It's just a lechatchila hinder, maybe it's, it fits in, you know, this on the Pash is better, but bottom line is no different. According to the Yishami, if you assume this is an Iker of Tvila, because not everything we miss in Tvila, many of the stuff in Tvila, if it's just added on, you know, many people think the Pismonium, the extra Slichas, that's the important part, or the Chaintein Pachtacha, it's the, the Yikr Brachas are the ones we make all the time. The other parts are extra, so assuming Zikron Chua and Yom Chua is considered something essential to the davening, so then according to the Rishami, we'd have a problem. According to the Rishami, if you mix them up, you, you're praying for the wrong day. You, this only refers to Shabbos, only refers to Yantav, so perhaps according to the Rishami, then you'd have to repeat your davening over if it, if we assume it's an Iker. That was one Nafkamina. Another Nafkamina is more for Svardim, because our meaning is we make a Shechiyano both days on the chauffeur. We make a Shechiyano Thursday and Friday. It doesn't make a difference, but the Minik Svard, or only some of the Minagamar, you make a Bracha the first day. You don't make a Bracha after that. You only need one Shechiyano 
on shofar. Similar, but perhaps not identical to the by Megillah as well. They only make a Shachiyano at the Megillah reading at night, not the next morning. We make both. We make the Shachiyano both at night and during the day. So what happens in the show? It's Rosh Hashanah Shachol B'Shabbos. They either didn't learn the Mishnah, the Gemara, they didn't realize it was Shabbos. Whatever the case may have been, they used a, they blew a shofar in Shul on Shabbos. And then they realized the next day, wait a second, we weren't supposed to blow a shofar yesterday. But now, so we have a problem now. Do we make a Shachiyano today? In other words, were we Yotze our mitzvah of shofar yesterday on Shabbos? If we were Yotze, so then I don't make a Shachiyano because we only make a Shachiyano the first time we do the mitzvah. But if, if blowing the shofar was a meaningless activity on Shabbos, so then I have to go ahead and make another uh, Shachiyano today. So Would they also have a different opinion? Legabi Kiddush and Hadlokas Neros when we say Shachiyonu from both nights. But they, what's the meaning you mean inspired in terms Those of that? Those are all that you can, you only say Shachiyonu once. What about Kiddush? First two nights. Yeah, I think that's and, different because that's the and, Shep. And, and, and Hadlokas Neros. Yes, yeah, so it's a good cash. I have to check, I mean, have to no. check the minute, but I'm saying in terms of the Shechiyano at Kiddush, I assume that's a different Shechiyano. That's the Shechiyano on the Kiddush as Ayom. So I assume, again, I'm, a, I'm, get, I'm assuming that they do make a Shechiyano at the Kiddush. Whether you make, in general, making Shechiyano at Herlachas Neiros, many posts can say it's best, not that people follow it, it's best that the women should just wait for the Shechiyano. And here, I think it was Rabbi Yaakov, and then trying to convince his wife, even she won't listen to him. That to get the shachiyano because because the issue is not so much you can't make a shachiyano but but once you make a shachiyano you accept yanta bal karcha once you, you can't say I'm making shachiyano but I'm gonna drive to shul now or I'm gonna go cook go you know go turn off the oven once you make a shachiyano it's yanta so therefore so many posts can um, recommend that you just make the make the regular lahai with the arrow when your husband comes home. And he makes Kiddush, when he makes his Shachiyano, you should listen to it. But the bottom line is most women probably do make Shachiyano even at Halakas Neiris. That seems to be still um, the minute. But right, so it's a good for question for in terms... But for Yom Kippur, they should be right, so Shachiyano and Shul. No, for sure. And especially, right, that's the, the biggest issue is Yom Kippur, where you're most more likely... It's, it's only more likely because most women are, I don't know, most, but more than they would order, probably of any night of the year, it's probably, assuming you don't have little kids, um, then you probably go to Shul Kol Nidre and Yom Kippur night. So therefore, that's where the big issue comes up. And many times, the husband's used to driving, depending where you live, so it's not a problem. You can, but if the woman makes a Shachiyano, then, then it's a big problem. Not a big problem, but she gets to walk. But, so therefore, either she should make a Shachiyano or she should get into shape before Yom Kippur so she'll be able to um, still be, have enough energy to dava when she gets to shul for kol nidre. But either way, that's the, that's the issue is that it's more of an issue on Yom Kippur. That's the most likely scenario, even though it could apply, depending where you are, it applies to any yantav, but specifically, Lamais is probably more for Yom Kippur, where it's more, someone's more likely to violate it. Does that mean that the woman's, the woman begins Shabbos not with the Brocha Mahalik Neosha Shabbos, but with the Shechiyan? Well, you mean Jantif, you mean? Well, Shabbos and Jantif, same yeah, well, question. You, yeah, well, I'm saying you usually well, don't which, make... Which, well, at you what don't, moment does she make Shabbos? Right, I'm saying you usually don't make... Mahalik Neosha or Shechiyan? Yeah, you usually don't make Shechiyan on Shabbos, that's what I'm asking, but in terms of... At that, the, that depends on her, but the, the minute is that all things being equal, if you have no kavana, yet you're blank, that we assume a woman accepts Shabbos when she lights candles, assuming she has no other kavana. For a man, we assume he doesn't, unless the man is the one who always lights the candles every Friday. And let's say he he's doesn't have a wife, the wife passed away, he's the one lighting candles. So she doesn't have to, but that's the working assumption. If she doesn't have any kavana, the working assumption is that she, but she doesn't have to. But, but she doesn't have to. Once she makes a shachiyano, then she doesn't have an option anymore. But she doesn't have to, but that's the norm. But she doesn't, but it's not bal karka when you like. There are some sheets that we don't pass them like that says, 
that once you light candles, that's it. We don't pass them that way. We assume you could light candles where Moshe has a truth on it, and then you could drive to Shul after. Just, but then a woman specific, or, or not just a woman, but I'm saying woman because she's the one usually lighting. But anyone who usually accepts Shabbos when they're lighting, if they want to do something after, they have to have a kavana. Yeah, that they're not accepting it. But for a man who normally accepts Shabbos and Shul, you don't have to have a special... You so know, you can't do the same thing with a Shechianu? You can't say, I'm not... This Shechianu is not al Kedusha Sayyom? Right, that's what the... No, that's what, that's what the, that's what the Poskim is saying. Once you say Shechianu, the Shechianu has to be um, on, on the Yantav. You can't make the... Apparently, you can't make the Shechianu before the Yantav. It has to be... In other words, it's not because you're, not be, so it's not because you're saying the Shekhyano is on Kedusha Sayom, it's because it has to be Yom Tov in order to say Well, Shekhyano is on the Kedusha Sayom, but, the, but that is true. The, that Shekhyano is on the Kedusha Sayom, but, but that wouldn't be enough. Maybe you could argue what you want to say. That no, but she can, she can say, I'm, I'm, I'm saying the Shekhyano on the Hadlakas Neiros, right? Not Kedusha Sayom, in theory. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, and that, right. I guess Does that, that solve the problem? If you assume, yeah, I guess it's, um, unless if you assume it's a... Uh, it, it, if you assume it's a mitzvah, I guess a bar He says, I'll be, I'll be yotz with my husband when he says kiddush. Was it about Yom, Yom Kippur you're talking about? Or? Oh, yeah, I'm talking about Yom None of the Pusk can give that as a... No, because no, actually, so it's it, interesting Yom Kippur... Because you can make a shechi on one hadlok. Yeah. But what's so special about hadlok? It's not that you do hadlok all the yeah, time. Yom, not that's that, a shayla in terms of... I don't do hadlok as nearest of Yom Tiv. No, because the question is, that it's actually not It's actually not a simple shayla. Do you do you light candles for Yom Kippur? So I don't mean this year when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbos, we're going to do it, but it's a, it's a discussion in the post game. Do, do you make a Shekhyanu on, you know, do you make a Hadlak, you know, Hadlak is near, why not? Because some say, some say, I think the Ramah brings down, in fact, he says, to, you know, for, the, for totally different reason, you know, the reason why you light candles on Yom Kippur is because since it's an Isser of Tash Mishamita, there's a prohibition to have relations with your wife on Yom Kippur, so we know that luck is you can't have relations with the, any light on. So they even call it the minute of lighting candles in the bedroom. That's where, but you know, I'm not sure if that's the minute or not, but there's a child, even in the post can whether on a regular Yom Kippur, we, our minute is we do. But there's this, this a discussion even, is there a key of had luck is near us on Yom Kippur? Everyone's mode the Yom Kippur Shachal B'Shabbos, you know, that you get out. I think I'll, everyone I know lights candles on Yom Kippur also. I'm just saying is there's no discussion among the post come not to, but it was interesting, like, the post can discuss the possibility of not even lighting candles on Yantav. Because you're not doing it. Because why? Because the alum this is, because why do you normally light candles? Because of Oneg Shabbos. But there is no, there's, there's no Oneg. And perhaps not even Oneg um, on Yom Kippur Shachal. That's, you know, perhaps that could be a discussion for uh, Yom, Yom Kippur. Or shalom, or shalom yeah, but, sure. No, right. So it's all Shalom Bayez, but, you know, Shalom Bayez, oh, oh, you know, Shalom Bayez, what the Gemara says, and... It's, that could be part of Shalom Bayez, is, the, is, the, is part of the Oneg, so you have to be able to, you, you're seeing what you're eating, but if you're not eating, you know, so that's why that's, this, that's why there are those who discuss there is no mitzvah of Hanukkah's neighbors on Yom Kippur because there's no Suda. But I'm saying that's a discussion, but we, uh, so we do it. But it's interesting, the Ramar, I think, says you actually have to put him in the bedroom. I, whether anyone does that, I don't know. It makes sense but, you shouldn't have it yeah. on Yom because the, the Zera was made negative that's Stuki. Yeah. Who said you can't light a fire? I know because you can light a fire, right? right? So you don't need to make a you don't need to make exera against the stuking. You can't light on Shabbos. On, on Yom Kippur you can't. On, on Yom Kippur you can't. Right, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. but on Yom doesn't help you. Yom it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. So that's what we, so that's what we discussed last week. Whether someone will sh- show for on Shabbos, whether. So once the Chachamim say no shofar, does that mean it uproots the mitzvah of Gamre? Or no, basically it's telling me I can't do it, but not that, but not that the shofar doesn't, because that seems to be the opinion of Rabbi Kiva Eger, which seems to be the Pashtas, that there probably could be a Kiyam HaMitzvah if you did hear a shofar on Shabbos. It's just something, it's an Isra on the Gavra, I can't go ahead and hear the shofar. That's why it was a big tumult in Yerushalayim 150 years ago, one of the Gedolim wanted a blow shofar, because, because based on that, he felt that any place you have a makam based it, and it was it was Yushalayim, so it is the Mikdash according to the Rambam. Lamaisi never did, but that was a full discussion that year. Should we try to go to his minion to hear a shofar? I'm not going to blow a shofar, but if I know. That was in Eretz Yisrael, no, Eretz Yisrael, in Yushalayim. 
So, um, so Lamaisa, so that's a discussion, but so, so it would depend on the Yushalmi Babli. According to the Yushalmi, it's clearly a zero. So if you're Sephardi, you definitely need a new Shechianu on the next day. But according to the Babli, one can discuss the issue, perhaps there's a Kiyam HaMitzvah, and then you already got your Mitzvah, and therefore you would not make a Shechianu on the second day of Shofar. So when we gave and we, we went into the whole discussion more on the Koach HaChachamim. So we left off last week saying your, your father's question, he just asked me now. So Bishroma, according to Yerushalmi, I understand why the Torah describes the Shofar in Rosh Hashanah in two ways. Yom Chua and Zichron Chua. Because Yom Chua refers to during the week, Zichron Chua refers to Shabbos. But according to the Bavli, that both are dis- discussing Ben Bechol, Ben B'Shabbos, so what do I need the two psukim for? And the Bavli doesn't discuss it. The Bavli asked the question to Rishami, like, what are you talking about? That it's a, it's a the derisive distinction, because the Mikdash Heikha Takin, and the Bavli rejects the Yerushami, but it never explains what it does itself with the two psukim. So that um, Rav Salavechik gave a long um, Yortai Shiran in terms of what's the Pshat and the Bavli, what does the Bavli hold? So Rav Salvation explained as follows. He said that the, according to the Shalmi, Yom Chu and Zichron Chu are referring to two different days. But according to Bavli, it's talking about two different aspects of the mitzvah of Shofar. And in, and in classical brisker terminology, he says there's the Maisa mitzvah, there's the physical act, the act. Every, usually every mitzvah has a Maisa mitzvah and a Kiyam mitzvah. There's the Maisa is the act, the kiyam is the fulfillment. Many times it happens together. You shake the dollar minim. I'm doing the maisa mitzvah, but at the same time I'm also getting the kiyam ha mitzvah. I eat the matzah, so I'm chewing on the matzah, swallowing the matzah. I'm doing the maisa mitzvah. I'm also getting the kiyam. He says, but by shofar, he's showing there are two aspects to the mitzvah. They're separate. There's the maisa mitzvah. That's the actual blowing of the shofar, the, the yom trua, the tekiya shofar. And then there's the zikron trua that it has to make an impact on you. It has to be a turning inward. It has to be a zikron trua, a remembrance to you. And in fact, that's why the famous Rambam in Hilcha Shofar, that the Rambam writes that even though that Shofar is exeris akasub, and that's how we blow Shofar, nevertheless, it, there's a um, remez gudavar that it's Uri Shein and Mishanetzchem that we have to wake up out from a deep sleep. Basically, it's a, we're all familiar with an alarm clock. The Rambam says it's our spiritual alarm clock to wake us up from going through the every the daily parts of life. We have to wake up and realize Rosh Hashanah is coming and we have to uh, become better. So he says that that's the that's the act. It's not enough. By another by other mitzvahs, we'll see it's enough just to do the Maisa mitzvah, and the key usually comes automatically. But when it comes to chauffeur, it's not enough just to do the act. It has to be, it has to be an impact. In fact, that's the Rambam. There's a, fa- it's a famous um, discussion in the Gemara and an apparent contradiction in the Rambam on the topic of mitzvahs, sriches kavana, where the mitzvahs require intent. The Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Gemara in many other places. It's a dispute in the Gemara where the mitzvahs require intent or mitzvahs don't require it. And of course, I always point out, this is a post-facto machok. If no one that says, I'm about to do a mitzvah, make sure you don't have kavana. But everyone agrees you should have kavana, but the question is, legally speaking, if, if I did the mitzvah without the requisite kavana, do I still get credit um, for the mitzvah? So let me just point out also, the Chayadam and the Avnanezah point out as well, this within mitzvah streich of kavana. In other words, everyone agrees there's, let's say a person happy Cohen didn't didn't it was a Jewish person. He never heard a Hanukkah, he didn't know anything about candles, and he happens to light a candle that night. Everyone agrees whether he holds mitzvahs even according to mitzvah's ancient, you know, it's nothing. He doesn't even know he's doing a mitzvah. And everyone agrees as well, if let's say you know there's a mitzvah, you know I should be doing it. At the moment I do it, I just daydream, like at that second or a couple of seconds, I space out for a second. But even if you hold mitzvah striches, that's not the machokis here. The machokis is where you know there's a mitzvah of shofar, or you know there's a mitzvah, whatever mitzvah we're talking about, and but you're not doing it 
you let's say you're, you're, you're practicing, you're doing shofar, you're going to go through the takia true, but you're doing it because you're practicing, you're doing it to getting ready for, um, to do it in shul or whatever. So that's the machok, you actually, you know there's a mitzvah, you know what's going on, but I don't have kavana now at this time to fulfill the mitzvah. So that's the machogas of the mitzvah streak is kavana on that. So well, how does the Rambam pass in? Well, in the Gemara, it seems to be a discussion. Uh, uh, and in fact, so before how the, how the Rambam passed in, how do we pass in? So therefore, so the Magen Avram quotes, the Mishnah Brewer quotes the Magen Avram from the Radvaz, that since it's, since it's a discussion, the Gemara, we seem to make a compromise that on a mitzvah in our Torah, we say mitzvah streak is kavana. And on a mitzvah durabanan, we say, we pass in mitzvah's enus trichas kavana. By the way, the Be'er HaGrad disagrees, and he says, there is no distinction between the rice's durabanan. We say, mitzvah, according to the Vilna Nagon, we pass in mitzvah's trichas kavana, whether it's the rice's The Gemara itself discusses the concept of mitzvah's trichas kavana on a din durabanan, karpas at the end of our Psachim, if you have more, so it, it definitely is discussed regarding a Dindra Banan, but the way the, the Machabe clearly paskins Mitzvah Striches Kavan and Simen Samach by Hilchitz Kriyashma, so that leads to discussion, Kriyashma is Daraisa, so that's a whole discussion also they discussed there by Sirius Omer, so Lamaisa, without all the Lamdis, the bottom line is the Mach- the, the Poskim seem to follow the Magan of Ram, then the Mitzvah Daraisa, you we pass in mitzvah striches kavana, and on a mitzvah drabanan, we pass in ain't striches. That's the, not with, you know notwithstanding the grass. So comes to one. What's the, how does the Rambam pass? Since the right seems to be a stira in the Rambam, mm-hmm. the Rambam writes in Hilchas Shofar. Basically, he writes that in order for me to fulfill the mitzvah of Shofar, the one who's bowing the Shofar has to have me in mind. The one listening, we need a partnership. Everyone has to have kavana. He's very big on kavana. And if not, you know, you know, so it's pretty clear from the Rambam and Hilchis Shofar, Mitzvah Striches Kavana. So if it's all, it's all if, you know, ignorance is bliss. If the only thing you know, if the only Rambam you know is Hilchis Shofar, then you're okay. The problem is, in Hilchis Chamei to Matzah, there's another Rambam. They were the Rambam writes, Achol Matzah below Kavana, Yi Matzah below Kavana Kagon, that, um, that the robbers, that they basically, you know, let's say someone puts a gun to your head and says you have to eat the matzah now, or, so, or, or other examples he gives. Bottom line, he says, yatsa. So the Rambam clearly writes, you can fulfill your mitzvah of matzah without the appropriate kavana. Clearly, the implication being from this Rambam, mitzvah's eno srichas kavana. So how do we reconcile the Rambam? So there are many different answers to how you reconcile the Rambam. Maybe we, We'll get some more in later. But the one that's relevant to us is from Rav Salavechik. He wants the answer as follows. Really? The Rambam Paskins like Hilchas Chamei Tzumatza. Really, the general rule the Rambam goes with Mitzvahs Enos Rikas Kavana. That's the way the Rambam Paskins. Aye, what about Hilchas Shofar? Why is that an exception to the rule? So that's what Rav Salavechik explained and he gave a whole um, shir on this in terms of that basically, what is the essence of the mitzvah of shofar? The, basically, normally we dab and we have a sitter or we do it by heart. It's prayer with words. It's the tefillah with words. Our salvation can explain the shofar is the inarticulate cry to our Kaddish Baruch It's basically a tefillah without words. It's part of the tefillah sayom. And, and as the Rambam writes in, in Hilchus tefillah, called tefillah, Below Kavana Eino Tzvila. We won't get into the first, the first, um, the, the first bracha and the rest. But the Rama basically writes, if you, by definition, that's what Tzvila means. Kavana Salev. If you don't have Kavana, you're not davening. And to the Ram, so the Rambam is saying shofar as well as a dinner Tzvila. And in fact, that's what that's what Rav Salvation wants to bring a geographical proof to this. What kind of geographical proof? Where do we blow shofar? So, the Minik Ashkenaz is we blow shofar during Chazaras Hashat. We do them during to the repeat. But some Nusach Svard, Minik Svard, is they even blow shofar during the silent Shmon Esrei. In fact, Rav Salavechik, um, who was 
said over that he thinks um, if you're in a small minion, again, assuming you're, if you're minig Ashkenaz, it's fine. But if you're minig Sfard, he said if you're in a small minion, something controllable, whatever the numbers are, 25, 50 people, then he's okay with, with blowing it during the silence when it's used. But if you're, there, if you're a big minion, he said it's a big, it's a big circus, and no one knows what's going on in the middle. People are blowing show for people. He didn't like the idea. Uh, he said, even if you're minic expired, he said, if it was a big minion, he, he recommended that you shouldn't blow a chauffeur during the sign because this is more out of control. But either way, that's not so a lot of things. So why would the the tequila stand meet up? Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute, in, yeah. In contrast to... Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. So therefore, therefore the, so the, that's what the Rambam writes. So, no, so, that's, so why do we blow a chauffeur, even, even according to something in the middle of our sign lunch, when I say we don't eat matz in the middle of Shmon Esrei, we don't shake lulav in the middle of Shmona so it must be because shofar is a din in tefillah. It's part and parcel of the tefillah's hayom, as we'll see. It's part of the mitzvah's hayom. Is, is we have words of tefillah and the shofar is an inarticulate cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And to get to your, get to your point, that's why the, also the, he, has, he brings out many similarities between shofar and tefillah. The gum, Gemara, the Mishnah tells us in Brach, I think the fifth parak, it tells you how to daven, one should be kafaf, one should be bent over to show some humility. So too, the shofar also has, is, is kafaf, it's also uh, is, is bent as well because, it, because it's a din in tefillah. And they point out as well, this is uh, what your father's getting to, we know the Gemara talks about the different types of tekiahs. The Gemara talks about this, the Tekiyas Ma'umad and the Tekiyas Ma'yushav. And there's a, 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 a machokas among the Rishonim, which is what? What is when the Gemara talks about the Tekiyas Ma'umad, the standing ones and the sitting ones, what are we talking about? So that's a, so that's a discussion. Um, some say that Tekiyas Ma'umad are the ones at the end, you're about, you're running out, and therefore those are at the end. But the the Baal, so the Balamor is an interesting shita that one will focus on. The Balamor shita is that that the Zakias to Ma'umad are the ones like I think he said those are the ones just standing up in the Shmona Esrei Chazar Zashat, and the Zakias Meyushav are at the end. However, so he said, ah, right, so he asked, what about the Zakias before Masaf? So that's the Chiddush of the Balamor. The Balamor says those were a later institution. In other words, they talk about the kids. The other Rishonim discussed those before. Those are the ones they talk about before and during. The Bama says no. The Dekiyas we have before Musaf, that was a later institution. In fact, he says, you know, you know, and that's why we, there's a Machlokas Rishonim between the Rambam and Rabbeinu Tam on what is the Nusach HaBracha. Why doesn't the Gemara tell us? Give us directions on what bracha to make. Should we make the bracha lishmoa? Should we make the bracha tchiyah shofar? So the Baal Moore says because it was it was after. He says why was it after? Because because what was the original takana? You boo shofar the first time in the Shmon Esrei, and we have a general principle. We don't make a bracha on a bracha. In other words, we find that in the Siva others Achronim write the famous kasha. Why don't we make a bracha on Sipor Yitzias Mitzrayim? It's a mitzvah in a Torah. We all pay so There are many answers, but but some Achronim point out because since the whole Agada is I'll say our brachas, we don't make a bracha. Or, or why not Birkas Hamazon or Tefillah? Why don't we make a bracha? I'm about to fulfill my mitzvah of Tefillah, whether it's the rice of the Rabbanan or on Birkas Hamazon. So the Rishonim have a cloud. We don't make a bracha on a bracha. If if you if the whole mitzvah is in the context of a bracha, there's no need. It's redundant. There's no need for an extra bracha. So the Balamor says, you know we you know why there was no bracha because the Shmona Esrei that was the Birkas Hamitzvah. The Malchia shows the We say in Shmona Esrei that served the role as the Birkas Hamitzvah. In fact, on a similar idea we find the rush in the beginning of brachas. We know the Mishnah talks about davening. Um, Early Mayrev, well, we talked about davening, saying Kriya Shema at Tzitzah Chukhavim. So over there, the whole big toast is in the beginning of the Masechta goes to the issue of what, you know, davening early, how much is Shema, let's say you say Shema early, do you have to repeat it, how many parishes, etc. So it's an interesting, so what do we do? Our meaning is when we daven early before Seitz. So we repeat Kriya Shema later on, we repeat the three parishes. But 
and, and that's how we do it. But the Rav Amran going is a very interesting shita. He says when you dive in early in Shul, okay, so then you have to go home and repeat the Kriyashma. You know what you have to do at night when, it be, when you repeat the Kriyashma? You got to make a bracha. Al mitzvah slikro shma. He says, you know what? He says, of course, like any mitzvah you have to make a bracha. The reason, if you dive in the appropriate time, so the birkas kriyashma was your birkas ha mitzvah. But now you're going to say kriyashma in a vacuum at night. He says one's obligated to make a bracha. We don't pass in that way, but that's a, that's the same concept that the Balamor is saying. In the the, the shofar was always done in the context of the bracha. There was no need for it nusach bracha. It was only a later institution. People had to leave early. They weren't feeling well. It was too long. Maybe the became longer, and therefore they had to get out. So if those people had to leave early, they wanted to make sure they get some show for it. So, that's, so we see clearly the rough points that according to the Baal Amor, there's an inherent connection. Those were the, 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 the Shemona Esrei, the Tfilas Musav, was the Birkas HaMitzvah for the show for This is a direct link between the mitzvah of shofar and tefillah. That, that, that's exactly why it was set up there. And in fact, that's what the Rosh contingent and brought another proof from another Gemara. The Gemara tells us in Rosh Hashanah, we know we're pretty flexible in terms of, you know, making a shofar, but the Gemara tells us a shofar shall para. A shofar made from a para, you shouldn't use because ain kategor Nase Sanegor, because it reminds us of the sin of the Cheda Ego, and therefore we always, we're always looking for atonement for that sin, and therefore we don't want to bring up bad memories, so therefore we should not use the Shofar Shopara. So the Gemara says, What are you talking about? We'll worry about Enkatego Nase Sanegor. The, we know the Kohen Gado, when he goes into on, on Yom Kippur, he wears the big day Lavan, and he wears the big day Zav. And the Gemara over there says the only time it's a problem of Ein Kategor Nasa Sanega, again, the goal reminds them of the sin of the golden calf. So only when he's in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, then he has to put on the big day love. But outside the Kodesh HaKadoshim, there's no problem. He can wear the big day sub. So last I checked, the Gemara has been not blowing chauffeur, maybe the Kohen Gunther was, we're not blowing chauffeur in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. I mean, you know. Uh, we're blowing it in New York, Toronto, wherever we're blowing it, Israel, but not doing it. So, what's the problem? What's the problem with the Shofar Shopara? The Gemara seems to limit Ein Kategor, Nasa Sanegor to the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So, the Gemara answer is, you're right. No, but Shofar is special. It's like, a, you know, it's a cryptic answer, something, it's Kazikron Dovi, it's like a remembrance. And what the, what the Mepharshim explained is that basically this idea and the revelation, that basically, when you, we know by tefillah, every time you're davening, you're supposed to be machav into the Kodesh HaKadosh, you're supposed to be facing that way. So since shofar is a din at tefillah, there's a special halacha by shofar, that shofar is considered lefnei Hashem, it's like you're sitting, wherever you're blowing the shofar, you're like sitting in the Kodesh HaKadosh, you're considered lefnei Hashem, and therefore the halacha of ein kategor nasa senegor applies to shofar. The, even though the Gemara limits it to the Kodesh HaKadosh, but since shofar is a din and tefillah, and we have to machav in that way, so therefore that's how far, um, that's how far the halacha goes. That's and, the rough thing, that's the Yeah, thing. that's the rough part over there, you know, in, in his Gemara. And another rai he had is from a Gemara, also Rosh Hashanah. The, Gemara, the other Gemara is as follows. The Gemara says that let's say you're stuck in a small town, and you don't have a minion, or you don't even have a sitter, and you don't have a chauffeur. So you have a choice to go, let's say, to go with a minion this way, but no chauffeur, or well, the other town has a chauffeur, but no minion. So what do you do? So the Gemara says, Pshita, it's obvious. Chauffeur's Daraisa, saying, Amira Malchi, Shofar Zichron, is only Durabanan. So what, so it's obvious, that's what you should go to. So comes along to the Rav Salvation and the Chasim Sofer, others, this Gemara seems to be difficult according to Shita's Rashi. Because Rashi writes in the Gemara, but he says it on Chumash as well, in Parashat Emor, when the Torah talks about Zichron Trua. What is Zichron Trua? So Rashi writes, Amiros Malchus Shovas Zichronis, saying over the Psukim, saying over the Psukim about, about these things. So clearly according to Rashi, it's a Din Daraisa. So how does he deal with the Gemara? The Gemara said clearly that 
the brachas that saying Amir is Malik is Zoras are only Durabanan. So Rav Salvesha explained as follows. Well, why isn't either? You, you, your choice is to hear Shofar. You're going to be Yonadav and be Yechidus. No, either. Still. No, so you're still going to be Yosef. One or the other. Minion or Shofar. What? Minion or Shofar. You go to the Shofar and you'll Dav and be Yechidus. Is that... Is there, is there some assumption yeah, that if you listen to the chauffeur, you can't dumb the chiddush? He may not know how. Maybe he doesn't have a sitter. Uh, yeah. I thought the uh. question is, it's either minion or chauffeur. Right. So I have to. The minion's not. Minion. Somehow he's in that position. Yeah, we have, have to, to make that choice. Yeah, well, I have yeah. to check. That's the question. Was better. Yeah. Is it is it two of the tibur or is it? Two of the tibur. That's not. That's not the question. That's not. No, I have to check. That's not. That's not even Durban. Unless he's just saying that. Or I'm not sure if it's either. I have to check if it's actually just. He doesn't have a sitter, or I thought it was two, but see, but I have to make I sure. Think that's the question. That's what that I thought the question. It's not why? even Durbanan. But that's why the Gemara says she thinks he should. should, he should no, the Gemara says it's Derisa or Durbanan, but it's not Derisa or Durbanan. It's Derisa or right. something right. less than a Durbanan. No. Minion? What? Yeah, yeah. Tzibur. Yeah. Tzibur is at least a Durbanan. No, that's a, no, at best it's a Durbanan. At best, at yeah. Best. Okay. At best. best. It's probably not. Right. It's an Eitzah Tova. Right. It's minimally an Eitzah Tova. Minion? Yeah. And, and that's so loud. Yeah, I'm not going to quote you. <laughs> you know, his choice isn't between chauffeur and minion. <laughs> his choice isn't necessarily between chauffeur and minion. His choice was between chauffeur and davening. Right. That's why I don't understand. Unless, yeah. he, unless he doesn't know how to daven. Well, it, no, but then maybe he's davening to Raisa on that day to Nei Sarah. Yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. The fact is, is that, is that Rashi is saying that there's, a, there's an aspect of the hidden, it's not my akid, but it's an aspect of the, of the additional aspect of the rice and mitzvah to say, to say, shofar zikronius, amalfi shofar zikronius with the shofar. But, but over here, that's what, yeah, the shofar. That's what we're going to so, answer. Yeah, that's so right. I understand the question. No, that, no, that's his answer. He's saying is, when do we say, when do we say, when does Rashi say zikron shua is, is elevated to a did the raisa? That's when you do it in the context of shofar. Right. The key is shofar elevates the malchus to a din deraisa. But right. in the case of the Gemara, you don't have a shofar yet. But just going to Lazy's point, that's what the Ram, I mean, based on the Ramban in Parashas Emor, Mikrai Kodesh, so therefore, uh, perhaps on Shabbos and Yantiv, there's a din deraisa to daven with the minions. Not just davening, any type of holy assembly, like even having a public shear on Shabbos or Yantiv. That's the Ramban and Parshas Emor. That, but that not because of Tzvi Lebitziba, but any type of any type of communal gathering on Shabbos or Yantiv, perhaps it's a derais according to the Ramban and Mikrei Kodesh. But that, yeah, you want to say Kiyam Derais? Kiyam Right. So you're still, yeah. still left in right. the same. Coming back to the Yerushalmi who says that uh, that on Shabbos Shachal Vashon Shachal Yis B'Shabbos. Is not Yom Teruah, but it's only Yom Zichon Teruah. So right. why do we blow shofar in the, in the Mikdash? That's a special um, lima they have that, that from the juxtaposition of the Psukim, Yom Trua is next to the, the Makam Karbanos. So they, he has a drasha, but Makam Karbanos, it's always a Yom Trua. It's a special lima the Yushami has. Oh, I that, see. To make it, where else? Because that's the Babli's question is the Mikdash Haken Tarkina. What are you talking about, the Raisa? Then how could you, if you're telling me that if Zichron Trua is referring to Shabbat, then how could you both show for, hence the Babli rejects the Yushami. But the Yushami keeps it, and therefore Yushami, because Yushami has its own limud that um, the Babli doesn't have. Mm. So even though, in other words, the, in, in the Mikdash, Roshon Yishchalias B'Shabbos is is, is Yom Zichron Torah and Yom Torah. But in Chutz, outside, beyond the Bessim Mikdash, it's only Yom Zichron Torah. According to the Yushami, yeah. But, you know, well, you know, Kwain, it's a special, you know, exactly what that limit is, but right. But basically, the Yushami, the Zichron Torah refers to Shabbos, Yom Torah refers to during the week, <coughs> but Medina. Except in the, in in the, the Mikdash. Mikdash is a special limit that because even in the Mikdash it's still it's still a Yom Chua. Yeah. And then, you know, in the Babli... It's a little difficult to be in Miskabal and Das. Yeah, some, yeah, I'm just saying it's somewhat like there's a Yushami also. I think Rav, the Rav had something, another idea of the Yushami, which it's hard to say it's the right, so but it has to do with um, having Tachinus on Shabbos. That was chauffeur, you know, didn't feel it. Maybe that's what the Yushami... He has a, 
he, he has a shtickle on that in turn. It's hard to say it's a deraisa, but we assume, I don't know if it's, if it's a deraisa to make a tachin on Shabbos, but he, you know, he, he learns the Yushami also in a different way. But I'm saying that's, but that, you know. Sorry, so could you could go back to explain the, the reason again for most, the choice between Musaf and Yeah, so, so those the Gemara says you, you choose. Right, the Gemara says Pshita you, Pshita, you pick the chauffeur, because chauffeur is deraisa, and Malchus Shifon of the Kronos is only Durabanan. So I, so according to Rashi, it's the Raisa. Rashi writes Zechron Trua, Amira's Malchil Shol versus Zechronah. So how do we reconcile Rashi? That's what the, the Rav said, the Chassid Zohar also, I think, has a similar idea. No, so when does Rashi say Zechron Trua is the Raisa? That's in the context, that was in Alec Yushami, in the context of the chauffeur. And that when you're blowing chauffeur, when you're saying a chauffeur, I'll say the Habrachas, that raises zikr, that raises the malchus the tefillah to a to a level of the raisa. But the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, which calls uh, that calls malchus of the rabbanon, that's how in a case where there is no chauffeur. And that this this answer really contradicts what you said beforehand, because the Rashi's idea is not ma'akim. And the point is, is that you still have a key mitzvah, even if you don't say, if you don't, say, even if you don't say, Malchus um, Shofar Zechron. Yeah, the key of mitzvah what? Of, of Shofar. If you blow Shofar by itself. Right, without right. that, right? So the fact is, is Rashi's saying that the rights is leading from different true, but it's not part of the key mitzvah. But the rough holds that there's an actual key of mitzvah, there actually seems to be the key of mitzvah. He's trying to use that to defend his idea of key of mitzvah, but it really doesn't. It's actually... But right, hey, Rashi is talking. Rashi is saying in the nothing to do with show for Rashi sheet is that you know you're saying that saying Malchus, but then how does he, how do you explain the Gemara no, according the, to Rashi? No, the the, the the Rav is trying to argue that that um, that that, that um, there's a key in mitzvah, right? In in, in other words, there's a mitzvah and mitzvah, a key in mitzvah. He's using that Gemara. To show that the key mitzvah, because there's an idea of zikron trua from the fact that Rashi says you have to say these saints, but that's only a hitter mitzvah. It's not a key mitzvah. So I'm not exactly sure how the rub is. Pr- I mean, he's proving that there's another aspect of the mitzvah besides just the mice and mitzvah of blowing shofar, but it really, but it doesn't really prove that the, the aspect is actually a key mitzvah. You know, that that's right. that's that's uh, what, I, what I'd like to see. Right, so that's what so that's what the Rav developed for five six hours in one of his Yorzeit germ that the Bavli says you that Yom Chua and Zichron Chua are referring to two different days, but we hold it's both Ben Bechol Ben B'Shabbat. So why do we need both? So that's what he developed that the two aspects to the mitzvah shofar. That normally you have the Ma'aseh mitzvah and the Kiyah mitzvah go hand in hand, and usually it's enough. You could get away with just doing the Ma'aseh mitzvah, but it comes to shofar. It's not enough just to go in and, and hear the chauffeur, but it has to be a zikron true. It has to leave an indel, it has to leave a mark on you. And that's what the explains that the whole Indian you know, of the chauffeur, besides being a Zerus Akasov, it's a spiritual alarm clock to wake us up. And that's the whole, that's just the whole you saw, chauffeur, chauffeur kafaf. And that's why by chauffeur we pass in the Rambam pass in Mitzvah Srikas Kavana, because called Tzvila below Kavana Eno Tzvila. And that's the Yisod of the Baal Amor. The whole Birkas HaMitzvah was set up, I'll say that Brachas on the Tzvi, because that was the original, there was no, that was a later institution of making a Bracha before Musaf. And that's how he wants to explain Rashi, that Rashi also agrees. It's only the Raisa, when you do it, I'll, you know, I'll say that Brachas. And therefore, and, that, and that's the Yisod of um, Shofar, that that it's not enough just to have a, to be a yom trua, but it also has to have a zikron trua. It has to have some um, last, some lasting impact on us as well. Is that an additional reason to the distinction between that my, that there's that you need a misa when you you need you need a some sort of a, a of a misa to do when you're hearing a shofar versus when you're eating? You still have that, and does it go hand in hand with that, or is that a different reason? Well, with the cane and and that. Well, but, no, in, in the in, in, the, in the in the in the steer in the Rambam. Yeah, so one of the small, answers that's small. given yeah, is, that, is that one is that that basically you, you, there's no misa, so therefore you have to do yeah. something. But it, it may work very well with, with with what you're saying. It's just an expansion of that. Why right, do you need saying, to do? Uh, yeah, okay, he's explaining. He's talking about Rabbeinu Yon and Brachas. And another answer that we didn't mention is that um, there's um, 
there's a Gemara in Brachas and Daf Yud Aleph Yud Beis around there. The Gemara basically gets into this discussion of Mitzvah Shri Chizgaman. It's talking about you holding a cup, you think it's one thing, you, you start making the Bracha a daiti, the wrong thing, but in the end you find that it's good. So the Gemara goes to Basar Iker, Basar Chasima. The toes over there is what's the big deal? Mitzvah saying Shri Chizgaman, what are you making a big deal over nothing? Who cares? This is, so you know, the toast is pointed out over there that if you have negative kavana, negative kavana is worse. So Rabbeinu Yona, in the back of the Gemara over there, he wants to introduce a, a different concept. He says, he says, when do we pass in mitzvah striches kavana? When do we pass in mitzvah and striches kavana? So Rabbeinu Yona writes, b'davar sheyesh bo maisa, on something which involves an action. So then we pass in. Mitzvahs ain't shrikas kavana because as the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. With greater kavana, I'm actually doing something that demonstrates my kavana. But on a mitzvah that is passive, it has no maisa, so therefore then you need you don't have anything to show anything. You have to so then we say mitzvah shrikas kavana, and that's what they say the pshat that in the Rambam because that's the whole machlokas Rambam Rabbi Tam. What is the mitzvah? Is the mitzvah the shmiya shofar? Is that the mitzvah? Is the mitzvah the takia? So, so they point out that that could be a, that, that could be the machlokes Rambam Rabbeinu Tam of mitzvah striches kavana by shofar. According to the Rambam, that the ikkar is shmiya, and the Rambam himself says even the tokea, the guy blowing the shofar, even he's passive because that's incidental. It happens to be, but he's no different than the person who's hearing the shofar. And therefore, according to the Rambam, mitzvah strikas kavana, perhaps according to Reino Tam, if you hold the mitzvah of Takiya, then you could argue, you know, mitzvah's, um, mitzvah's ain't strikas kavana. Right. And just to, uh, just to conclude, that's what they point out, that why is it that, um, why, is it by, why is it by shofar that we have the mitzvah shmiya? We're all equal when it comes to shofar. Like, cause we don't we don't say shomea we don't we we're being yotzi we, we, everyone's being yotzi. I'm not, yeah, everyone's being yotzi. Not shomea kaona. You're being yotzi. Ah, he by me hearing the shofar. Um, that's how we yotzi. Why don't we want to do shomea kaona or other things? Yeah, so that's what the Ramosha others point out that dafka by shofar because we want to show the actors. That's what the 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 story with Elisha and the. Um, with uh, Isha Shunamis, that <coughs> that after when he was it was Bo it's a tenet of Am Hayom the Zohar says it's Rosh Hashanah but he also says the Yom it says the Yom that day it was Rosh Hashanah going to the Zohar and Elisha asked what can I do for you you did so much for me you have any tickets to find any parking tickets you want me to you want me to speak to the king and he meant the Melach Malchay Amalach Hamagadish Baruch Hu and what did she respond? So chami, all I all I want I want to be judged among the cloud. As long as I'm judged among the cloud, then I'm okay. And that's what Rishon Salanta used to always say. You should try to be a Adam Jaharabim Tolibo. You should always try to be a person who the Rabbim is dependent on. Because even though you're not Zoha on your own, but together with the Schuz Rabbim. In fact, that's the Orachayim HaKodesh. We asked week that do we know the difference between um, the Tochacha and Parashas Kisavo and the Tochacha and Parashas Bechukosai is Bechukosai ends with Nechama, the Eskor, Brisi, Avos, etc. And Kisavo ends up abruptly. You'll be sold with no one's going to want you. That's the end. So the question, so many answers, why, why does one end with Nechama and one doesn't? So the Orachayim answer is because the Parshish Bechukosai and Bechukosai Teilechu, it's Lush and Rabim. So when you're being judged among the Rabim, so then there's always hope, there's always the Schuss of those. But if you don't, if you be Hotze Atasim when Akwao, you want to be judged as a Yachid. And that's why Tzvila B'Tzibor, the greatest of Tzvila B'Tzibor is because our Tzvila can't stand, you know, the scrutiny on its own, that together with everyone else. And that's the so during your show that we got to do the mitzvah shmi and everyone does the mitzvah because we want to be the Sochami and Nochi Yoshevis because who can stand the judge on their own? So we always try to be a uh, part of the cloud I and mean, you know, we part um, be, be part of the Sibor. Have a Sibor and a yeah? How does that relate to the show firm? Sorry. To the show firm, the show that's why we pass in the midst of the hearing. We're all doing it. We're all doing it, we're all equal. It's not that one person's blowing, you're, you're the key and everyone else is incidental. 
we're all the same. And that's why, because that's when it comes to Shofro, we want to show we're all part of the cloud, we're all, you know, as judges, part of the seaboard.